All right, this is a quick review of uh, some of the rules of taking derivatives. And uh, I'm assuming that you remember the sum and difference rule, which just says take the derivative of each thing and then take the sum or difference. Um, and the constant multiple rule, which just says if you have a constant multiple, take the derivative and then multiply by it. Um, so we'll start with the power rule, uh, which I don't really expect you to have forgotten. So it's the derivative with respect to x of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. So you bring the power down and you subtract 1. And uh, I'm going to do three examples here. So if I want the derivative of x to the 7th, that's going to be uh, 7 because I bring the power down, x to the 7 minus 1, which obviously is 7x to the 6th. Let's take a look at another one. So if I want the derivative of x to the 3 fifths, so don't forget the notation there, that d dx is uh, we're going to take the derivative and then the x is telling you what the variable is in case there's like an a and an r or any other types of variables in there. So x in this case is the variable. Um, so this is going to give us, bring the exponent down, subtract 1 from the exponent. So 3 fifths x to the negative 2 fifths. I'm going to leave it like that with a negative exponent in case I need to take the second derivative or do anything with it. Um, I mean, I could put it in the denominator, but I'm not going to. So here the derivative of uh, the square root of 11x. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually rewrite this because uh, this is not a power function, so I can't use a power rule. Now it's a power function, so I can use a power rule. So I just broke it up. Um, and now what I'm going to do is, so the radical 11 just stays out there, bring the power down, subtract 1 from the power, and then kind of clean this up a little bit. All right, so that's power rule, which I'm assuming you remembered, but who knows. Uh, next thing is the product rule. So the product rule is uh, the derivative of f of x times g of x is going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So I get that. And uh, let's take a look at one. So say I want the derivative of x cubed times g of x. So I don't even know what g of x is. It's just, you know, function notation. So it's going to be the first, which is x cubed, derivative of the second, g prime of x, plus second, which is g of x times the derivative of the first, which is 3x squared. I could factor this because there's an x squared in everything, but uh, to kind of save time, I'm not going to. Um, let's look at another one. So sine of x times cosine of x. So the derivative of sine of x times cosine of x, it's a product, so it's going to be first, which is sine of x. Um, derivative of the second, derivative of the cosine is negative sine, hopefully you remember that, um, plus second, which is cosine of x, times derivative of the first. The derivative of sine is cosine. So I get that. Uh, I can clean this up a little bit to get cosine squared minus sine squared. Uh, and then if you remember, cosine squared minus sine squared is actually one of the uh, 14 formulas that you learned last year. And that is cosine of 2x. Um, so that's kind of interesting. We'll return to that idea a little later. Uh, and then the last rule that hopefully you remember walking in the door is the quotient rule, which says the derivative with respect to x of a quotient, so f of x over g of x, is bottom, derivative of the top minus top, derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. All right, so the two things that people screw up with this is they put a plus in the numerator, which you shouldn't do. I think people are thinking of the uh, product rule when they do that. And they forget, they just outright forget the denominator. Um, if you put the denominator, make sure you square it, obviously, but uh, make sure you have the denominator. A lot of people forget. Uh, so we'll do one example with this. So it's sine over cosine. So again, the derivative of sine we know is cosine. The derivative of cosine we know is negative sine. So we're going to need those for this. So it's going to be um, bottom, which is cosine, times the derivative of the top, which is cosine, minus, and then top, which is sine of x, Derivative of the bottom is negative sine of x, and then all over the bottom squared, so cosine of x squared. All right, uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So I end up with cosine squared plus sine squared, which hopefully jumps right out at you, all over cosine squared. And then obviously the numerator is 1 over cosine squared. And then 1 over cosine is actually secant, so this is really secant squared. And then if you look back at what we took the derivative of, sine over cosine is actually tangent. So really what we just found out is the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And you might want to memorize that. Um, okay, so those are the three things that hopefully you're going to walk in knowing. Um, and I hope this was helpful. Good luck.